I'm Greg Fisher. Welcome to our podcast. Over the last several months, we've focused on the task of reimagining public safety and dismantling systemic racism. Today, we'll be talking to a person who will be central to that effort. Yvette Gentry was sworn in as chief of Louisville Metro Police Department earlier this month, and she'll serve until a permanent chief is in place and then a transition period. Chief Gentry is a champion for our city and for always doing the right thing for everybody. And she's somebody that I can totally trust on to give me her honest opinion. I'm glad to have her back on the team and please join me in welcoming her back to the city and welcoming her on to the podcast today. Chief, uh, our city faced a very challenging summer as people reacted to the Breonna Taylor case. What were your observations as a community member who also happened to be a retired police officer? I guess my first observations are just, just kind of sadness at the division that we're seeing in our city. I feel like we're, you know, there's been a lot of progress in some areas, but not enough progress in others. And I think it was kind of a perfect storm of uh, this terrible situation with Breonna Taylor has kind of really exacerbated some of our inequities that we have across in the city. So um, it was just sadness, um, just really upset to see where we were as a city. Well, you must have weld something up inside of you because you decided to step back into the arena after retiring as the deputy chief and the chief for community building and some time in the nonprofit sector. Uh, what made you want to return to LMPD at this moment? I, I truly believe you can't fix what you don't understand. Um, I think I understand the police department in uh, uh, very intimate ways, you know, just from having come up through the ranks, starting answering the phone in 1990, you know, 30 years. So um, and then just my experience with the city, I think all of that um, made me feel like it was time for me to, you know, kind of leave my comfort that I had to step back in in the meantime, just to try to build some bridges where I could, because I have good relationships inside the police department and outside the police department. So I thought, you know, this, this would be a good opportunity for me to come in um, and help a new chief transition. You know, you have a chief search that I didn't want to be a part of, but uh, as a lifelong Louisvillian and somebody who plans to stay here, my family's here, you know, um, so I'm not going anywhere. I want to make sure that we're the safest city we can be and have great leadership. Well, it took a special person to step up like that and with a deep love for the community and, and the police department. So I want to thank you again for making that big move for us. I appreciate it. Yeah. So you've been on the job for a couple of weeks now. And what are some of the observations that you have so far? Whew. I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose, but I expected that, right? So, I mean, what, day 12 or 13 days in, um, just trying to make just um, incremental changes to try to get us to a, a place where I feel like we can start to have conversations with each other. So the main thing, I've just been trying to be out there talking to people as much as I can, getting all the different perspectives as I start to really work through a transition plan for uh, our incoming chief. Um, but one of the things is just to increase supervision for our young officers. We, we talk about how young our police department is. So um, effective October 24th, putting lieutenants back on shifts um, so that we have uh, that experience and supervision at night and on weekends that we've been lacking. Uh, a lot of times after five or six o'clock, we just have an acting sergeant, somebody very young making tough decisions out there. So I thought that was something that could not wait. So we're gonna do that. Uh, transitioning our shootings back to divisions uh, where they used to be, it's a, uh, to take some of the load off of homicide. homicide has a very high workload right now and they're not able to really work their cases as effectively as they need to be because they're taking the district shootings too so taking those 400 shootings off their plate letting them focus on the homicides putting them back in the divisions uh, I think it's going to be a huge uh, step for us to uh, really start to bring some closure for those families um, and to decrease the retaliation shootings that we sometimes see mm -hmm. yeah we've seen an uptick in uh, violent crime homicides and shootings in particular in Louisville this year, unfortunately. What are your observations on what's behind that? Um, I think it's multifaceted. I have not been um, digging into it. Um, I think gang related stuff, I think is just a reality the, that we have to face. A lot of it is. Um, we've been focused on a lot of different things. It's just been a trying year with COVID. <laughs> People been right. cooped up in the house with, you know, COVID and everything. And then, you know, COVID went to civil unrest and COVID never has gone away. Um, and so you have all of those. I, th I feel like we have a perfect storm of situations that have created opportunities that we got to take away. 
Um, so increasing the officer presence back in the divisions, um, you know, doing a lot more just patrol, just officer presence, driving through every street, talking to people, trying to increase our visibility to take away those opportunities. And you've worked with our safe and healthy neighborhood efforts before in terms of you know, maximizing youth potential in the community. Where does that play in this challenge? I think I think Office of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods is going to be a, one of the bridge builders that we have to rely on heavily. Um, you know, there's been a lot of trying, you know, conversation and people trying to figure out ways to work together. And I think Safe and, health, safe and Healthy Neighborhoods, we envision that being the hub where those conversations continue to go on and those relationships continue to be built. So I see them as an integral part of um, the healing process for our city. Mm -hmm. Then we have a top to bottom review taking place with the police department right now with Hillard Heights. Right. And well, obviously we need a, a good, strong police department uh, for Louisville and a police department that says, hey, we need to improve like everybody else. All right. departments are doing that. And then we need to have the trust of the community with the police department as well. So it's always an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the top-down review fitting into that? I had my first meeting with them today. It was a great meeting. Um, you know, I just ask that, you know, sometimes reviews are, are um, thorough, but they're not always as helpful because it doesn't necessarily um, give a commander actionable steps to improve. And so I just ask them that, you know, as they take all this information in from the community and from police officers and everybody across government, I want them to please try to give us back something that we can use, actionable steps, put it in a format where a sergeant, a lieutenant, a major can look at it and say, these are ways that we can improve. Uh, this is what we're doing well, this is not what we're doing so good, and here's some actionable steps I can take. Because sometimes we get reviews and they don't come back that way. It's not very actionable. And I feel like if we're um, gonna take the time and the effort and spend the resources, just give us something that we can actually use because we, we wanna be better, and we wanna do better. So. Um, it's just important when we read those reviews that we have actionable steps. Um, and a lot of their feedback do. will be driven by a community response. Yes. So you've made it a point to spend a lot of time in the community yes. here at the early stages of this role, and I'm sure throughout the whole time. What are some of the things that you're learning from the community? I mean, the, pe the community first, I think, before we can start the reconciliation process, wants to know what happened in the Breonna Taylor case, of course. Uh, uh, everywhere you go, that's what people want to know. What happened from start, um, you know, from the investigation to the supervision of it all. Um, and so that's, of course, you know, w number one on my plate to, to get through that PSU investigation um, and to, you know, see where we are accountable and hold the people accountable that need to be held accountable, uh, learn the lessons that we need to learn and to uh, make sure that we're better going forward. Mm -hmm. And the folks, the patrol officers that are on the street, what are they telling you? I mean, that mor morale is low. It's just been tough. Uh, we're shorthanded. We lost 10% of our personnel. Uh, we're shorthanded. They worked some very tough hours. <laughs> we I talked to some patrol officers, too, about, you know, just NTI stuff. You know, you're out here working 12, 16 hours a day. You got to go home and try to get your kids focused on NTI, which is a challenge in itself. I got twins at home now that are probably doing something other than what they're supposed to be doing, <laughs> right? And so when you're fatigued and tired, uh, you have all these issues going on in the community, frustrated. Um, it's just a tough time to be a police officer, but I told him it's still a job worth doing. Um, and you have to believe that every day. You can't suit up and put this on and not believe that it's worth doing. Um, protecting people's lives and protecting people's families is, is a, definitely a job that is very rewarding. Um, I loved my career in law enforcement. Um, I never thought I would be doing it again, but I think just that love that I had for um, the bridge that you can build. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities to do good when you wear this uniform. Um, so I just try to remind them of that all the time. Just like stay focused on the mission. Stay focused on why you, you know, took the oath and did it. Um, lick your wounds when you, you know, when you're down. Um, but pick yourself back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the police community relationship is central to the success of any city. Yeah. And while it is a difficult time right now, it's a difficult time for everybody. So mm -hmm. us all coming together, we know is the only solution as well. So uh, you touched on this a little bit, but uh, you had, you've had an interesting career. You started uh, taking phone calls at 311, Metro, what we now call Metro Safe. So mm -hmm. what, what then, what was that transition and what made you want to become a police officer? It's interesting. I, I can't even really put my finger on it. When I started, you know, I was 20 years old when I started here and it was a good job. My mom was a dispatcher. And so I, I saw all her friends, I knew all of them and I, kind of followed in her footsteps and I wanted to be a teacher still. 
Uh, when I first came out of high school, I went to the National Guard so I could get the GI Bill to go to college and I wanted to be a teacher. But I guess it was just, you know, being around a bunch of really strong, smart police women in my neighborhood. My neighbor was a police officer, Mary Lett. Uh, and then just being in the building and just having that itch um, to try to do a little bit more. And that's just kind of my personality. Once I do one thing, I want to figure out what's the next way to move up through it. Um, and so it was just a natural progression for me. Well, here you are as chief, and you know, we don't talk so much about groundbreaking, but you're the first female police chief of LMPD. Uh, that comes with a lot of opportunities and a lot of responsibility, a lot of inspiration. I've seen that already from women in the community, especially young girls in the community looking at you and saying, boy, if she can do that, what can I do with my life? What's that been like? I, I think it's been good for, um, I get a lot of le letters and mail from grandmothers and um, thank, you know, thanking me for inspiring their daughters and their granddaughters to do something. So I take pride in that. Um, it's some pressure, you know, the first female uh, chief of this department. Uh, but there's also opportunity. We lead different. You know, we, we lead in a different way uh, just because we're women and we just do things differently. So I want to see, I want the community to see how women lead differently um, and can still be extremely effective. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, there's a lot in your resume, Chief. Uh, you retired here from Louisville Metro government and then you went to work in the nonprofit sector. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, what you've learned and by the way, I know you uh, run Rajan Rondo's foundation. Congratulations for the world championship there with the Lakers. Yeah, that's a good day. Thursday was a good day. Um, was it Thursday? Sunday. I forgot. They made us watch the second game. So whatever day it was. Yeah, all right. So it go was back Sunday. over there. <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Yeah, they had to throw that extra game in there. Uh, but I'm proud of him. I'm happy for him. I talked to him this morning. And I'm just super proud of him. Um, he's also a Bell Award recipient today, too. So it's just a good day for him, a good week for him. Um, I loved working in the nonprofit sector, the pace. I love the pace. Um, and then the charge I had uh, from running his foundation was just don't go do good for people. You don't have to tell anybody. Uh, so it doesn't get much better than that. You know, we just really helped children. We were one of the few foundations that put money in kids' pockets just to help them through. You know, it's times that even a 10 or 12 year old will make a tough decision if they don't have 20 or $30 in their pocket. That's just a reality. Uh, so we were able to create an incentive program for them. Um, so they would exchange their grades for incentives and money. And uh, we saw their GPAs just skyrocket because somebody was paying attention and praising them for the efforts that they had. So it's Definitely work I love. Uh, I already miss it, and I'm ready to get back to it soon. Well, you, you got another five, six months here. A few and months, yeah. Really appreciate you stepping up and uh, helping us through this transition period and leading the police department in the city that you love. Thank you. All right. Chief of Vet Gentry, thank you very much. Please join us next time for the podcast here from Mayor Greg Fisher.